Gamers, we're back, and what I'm about to reveal to you is a destructive build that will ruin the ladder, ruin your elo, unless you're playing Jushi's Legacy, then it will increase your elo, and it will skyrocket you to another level of video gaming. If you were gold, you're going to be conquer after this. We are going to be doing Jushi's Legacy 1 TC Aggression build. Now, I have done one guide like this uh, at the start of the DLC, but this is the updated version, much better version, and obviously we all have more knowledge about the game. Now, if you're wondering why haven't I done 2TC Jushi Legacy Guide, it is very, very, very similar to China. If you, if you played China, I mean, you're gonna know how to do Jushi's Legacy 2TC as well, and I feel like it didn't really warrant the guide. And I think this build is one of the best, if not the best build for the ladder with any save because of how easy it is to play. That being said, let's get started. I'm going to teach you how to do one TC uh, Zuginu all-in with Jushi's Legacy. And we have three games that I'm going to show you that I just played. They're fresh out of the oven. I'm going to show you again a game, uh, not again, a game against Chinese, a game against OOTD and the game against JD. So we got a good mix. We actually got perfect mix. We got a 2TC Civ playing against us now. We got OTD that rushed Castle, and we got JD that was aggressive uh, in the early game and then followed up with 2TC. So it's kind of like a perfect mix of this, okay? Just to showcase um, every single kind of situation and how to adapt to things. So you're gonna start by chopping wood with all five villagers and then once every villager has six wood you will build a mill and then shift click onto the sheep now you don't have to anymore wait for them to drop off the wood in order to go on the sheep you can just shift click that is fixed a while ago then you're going to build a village next to the food source so if you get harassed by knights or something you can quickly jump in and not lose your villagers and you can go i went eight here you can go seven villagers on food or eight it's fine. It's not a not a big deal. Uh, you're not rushing feudal, so seven or eight, whatever feels more comfortable with for you, go with that. And then we're gonna go three on gold. Now the big question is, what do you age up with? We will not be going Jungnan Tower at all, and uh, I'll explain a little bit why. So we're gonna do meditation gardens, uh, of course. The meditation gardens has been nerfed, but it's still very very good. So what do you... Oh my god, okay, I didn't scout this. Oh wow, I didn't know that this was like this. I would have put my landmark there. But, um, where do you put your meditation gardens? <coughs> so I've played around with this uh, uh, a little bit and in the past as well. Where is the best place to put meditation gardens? And it's like, if you're doing, if you're doing two town center builds or longer term gameplay, you want to probably prioritize stone and gold because you're going to get those forever. Probably almost never prioritize wood in any of these. But with this specific build, the 1TC Jushi Legacy All-In, I like to prioritize the food sources. So the berries is the number one thing that I'm going to be looking out for. The reason for that is... Um, you will, by having berries and by having food income, you will be delaying your farm transition by quite a lot. And you will not need as many villagers on food, which means you're not going to need to go out on the map as much. I would probably say with this build, prioritize berries, then gold, then wood, and then stone. Or if you can get stone as well, that's a, that's a bonus for sure. Now, once we have 8-3 split, you can see I can age up uh, in, a, in a second. We're going to go to rally to the wood that we already chopped because we want to be making production buildings. So <clears throat> I wasn't sure where I was going to put my landmark. So I was kind of looking around a little bit. Initially, I was going to go put it. Um, I don't know where I was going to put it, actually. But I decided to do it here. And I was getting 72 food per minute because I'm catching both uh, berry bushes over here. And again, if I saw this earlier, I would have probably put my landmark here and gotten double stone, gold, and berry. And then you can use the stone to maybe make a tower near your opponent and upgrade it for free. Uh, or you can use stone to add a TC at some point or something like that, right? Now, 
One thing I want to mention is do not be afraid to put this landmark out there. So what do I mean by that? Let's say this berry patch and this berry patch was here. Like this, one was here, one was here, and the gold was here. I would have made the landmark right here. Um, because you're the one all inning, it doesn't matter that it's a very exposed and out there because you're going to have a lot of units and you want to be pretty much very greedy with this landmark and get as many resources as possible. Now, the reason we don't go Jungnan Tower with this build, in the first guide that I made, you did go that because it gives you a few extra units, but this is not worth it. Why? If the game goes on and the all-in doesn't work out, what you can do is you will still have the Song Dynasty discount, which means that you can age up to Castle at a discount, and your age up will be like 1,000 food and 500 gold or something like that. So, yeah. So, over here, we're going to go wood now. We got eight villagers on wood, we got four on food, and we're gonna uh, rally the meditation garden villager as well back to food. Now, you do want to collect taxes as uh, often as possible, so whenever your mill has 40 gold, you want to collect it. And as the lumber camp was finishing, you're gonna queue up a, another, a second imperial official, so you can supervise lumber camp and you can supervise the mill. Now, the way this works out, if you look at my resources, it works out pretty well. Um, as my second Imperial Fish is going to come out, I'm getting on the, the wood so we can supervise that. And I'm going to go back, supervise the mill so that I can get Wheelbarrow. The first thing I want to do is I want to get the Eco Upgrades immediately. Uh, another thing, you don't need to rush Meditation Gardens with multiple villagers because, as you can see, I don't have resources to build Archer Ranges, so it doesn't make any difference if I were to age up now or in 30 seconds you're gonna jump with two as well if you want but you know so now we supervise wheelbarrow so it's gonna finish pretty quickly and with the next hundred gold we're going to be getting double broad axe as well so <clears throat> you can see i'm dropping off taxes getting double broad axe and the moment i have 150 wood i'm gonna start adding archer ranges in order to make zuginu um let me speed up a little bit uh, now this game, I actually could have gotten away with only six or seven villagers on food and that's because I also had meditation gardens. So I was getting, uh, it, it's not completed yet, but I was getting, or the income is not right yet, but I was getting seven to two food per minute, which is pretty much like two villagers. <clears throat> so basically right now I have eight villagers on food. Uh, so that's something that you might need to adjust as well when you play. Like, if you build Meditation Gardens on two golds, later on you're not going to need six villagers on golds. You can just leave um, three villagers on gold for the rest of the game because you have that bonus from the garden. Now we're producing Zuginu, and immediately I am going across the map because you want to be putting some pressure. Make sure to use your scout and, and make sure that, you know, the opponent is not making like knights or horsemen depending what civ they play so you don't get caught off guard. But you immediately want to start putting pressure wherever you can. <clears throat> so every 100 wood, you can see I'm making more um, more Zuganu. I'm just spamming from all three right now. And um, my income is looking good as well. And right now I have 8 on food, which should be good uh, in general at this point to have 8 on food. And then I like to re-rally to wood so I can get blacksmith. I can potentially get more... Um, production buildings uh maybe if you want to drop a tower in front of your opponent's base or you know just getting the upgrades and continuing the zuginu production now in this game i didn't build a tower but if my meditation garden was here like i said earlier and i was getting stone i would have probably pulled one villager right now and i would have built one tower here and upgraded it fully <clears throat> so that's what i would that's what i would kind of go for and that's why you need to adapt the way you're using your meditation garden a little bit now you can say you know well you can just go mine stone yeah but then if you mine stone you don't have enough income for other stuff and then you're not producing units and <clears throat> yeah so i'm still uh pumping out now one thing to note you do want to try and use uh try to collect your gold from the lumber camp and from mill every 40 gold manually and then shift click them back to supervise if you're maybe newer to the game or newer to the civilization and you don't have the APM, then 
tried to get a third scholar or third uh, imperial official sorry a bit faster i'm getting it around 615 uh, 620 but if you're not comfortable with manually taking the gold you know putting it in tc and then sending the imperial official back you can just get a, a official earlier and it will you know one will auto collect gold and then you'll have one on the lumber camp one on the mill so here i'm trying to do any damage i can i can see him trying to go for a stone right here so i deny that immediately and he decides to push out with the two horsemen which is not going to be enough uh because Zuginu are really really good i got my blacksmith right here you can see the workers split up there third imperial official is now bringing in the gold as well boosting my uh gold income quite a bit now if i was playing um like against the castle rush and they have tower on their gold i would probably research a siege engineering first i also got horticulture by the way I would research siege engineering first and put more villagers on wood in order to break that but because i can see my opponent is making units and we're both one town center uh, i decide to just focus on getting units um and also i'm gonna get steel arrow and under iron mash as well if you see uh yourself lacking gold <clears throat> you can also put more villagers on the gold to make that a little bit better so you can see i have five right now in order to get the upgrades and get everything else that you um, that you need. We're getting Steel Arrow. If you have the APM, the third Imperial Official, you can also use to supervise your upgrades quickly. If you don't have the APM, if you're not fast enough, don't have enough multitasking, don't worry about it. So what do you want to do with these Zuganu? Well, you want to go around and poke wherever you can. So I'm denying the stone here. I'm going here denying the gold. And if your opponent just sits in their base, they're going to run out of food eventually. If you're both making units, but he is, you know, just staying in his base, he's going to run out of food first. And you can see already have a pretty, pretty big lead. So here I'm making a ram finally to start putting some, some real, real pressure. And you don't need to go for anything crazy, you know? Sometimes I see people go uh, immediately for like town center. You don't need to go town center, just kill these houses, you know? Just pop cap him a little bit, force him to come out, you know, do a little bit of microing. If he tries to engage, you just defend your ram. See that? And what did I just do? I lost zero Zuginu there, and I killed, I think, three or four horsemen and two Zuginu of his, one or two Zuginu. Or not, I just lost some, uh, health on the ramp and the army count is even higher now i'm gonna go around because i can't put any pressure here so i'm gonna try to go around a little bit see what i can do and because i'm going around what i'm gonna do is re-rally my reinforcements here because if i rally them now they're gonna get mowed down by the enemy right so i re-rally them maybe he counterattacks too and i have a massive massive army going on here in the back of my base i have seven archer ranges um now if you plan to make rams in any of your games i would suggest putting around 16 to 18 villagers on wood uh i went a, a bit more here because i wanted to make a lot of rams to end the game but 16 to 18 on wood is fine and you want to have six seven on gold at around this stage where you're fully set up and you got your upgrades and then you want to be rallying on food. The reason you want to rally on food is you want to keep increasing your food income until a point where you're producing units, but you still have enough to age up. And remember, if you look, your age up is cheaper. Like I said, because I'm in, uh, uh, I'm not in Song Dynasty. Sorry, I said earlier in Song Dynasty. I'm not in Song Dynasty. I'm in the uh, Tang Dynasty. So my age up is cheaper. I'm killing the villagers here he tries to defend but obviously that's not gonna work i bring in reinforcements because i see that his army is here and i found him in the food sources over here mow that down i go in in tc because why not and the game ends so this is kind of the the guide for the build order now i'm going to show you two more games where i'm not going to explain the build order completely again but i will show you what happened the decisions and all that so we're going to do jd game first that i had where i do go for the uh all in zuganu but i start off defensive some sids will force you to play more defensive uh and 
you know, you can't just, like, move across the map when you're playing against knights, right? You have to gather a bit of an army. So, we're gonna open up the same way. And you'll see where the there's a difference in the builder. I also want to say that doing this against English will not work. So, if you're playing against English, that is probably the biggest uh, Jushi's Legacy counter as far as civs go. Uh, you probably want to find another build. Now, there's plenty of different builds you can do, but I don't want to get into that because that's going to take another 15 minutes. So, doing the same thing. Again, I'm putting the village next to the mill so I can quickly hop when the knight is there. He's aging up with four JD. Uh, so, or four villagers plus JD. One of them. Which is very, very quickly. And uh, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to chop the wood now, start getting the production buildings. And this time, I got another good meditation gardens, actually. I got stone right here. Uh, I got double berry and I got some trees. Very nice. Second option in this game, like if this didn't exist, I would probably put it like here. And if you're doing it on super, super open space, what you can do is just age up with two or three villagers so that you don't get interrupted. I could also put it here. So there's plenty of options. All right. Um... Here we go. I'm getting the wood. Now, this time around, because I'm playing against a Night Civ, and this is, works the same against any Night Civ, I don't want to be making Zuginu immediately. I want to open up spears to make sure I don't take damage from the Knights. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a barracks. I can even supervise it, so I can get the Spearman in 6 seconds to make sure I don't take any damage whatsoever. And another thing that I did, you'll notice, even though my supply is 24 out of 50, I make the village immediately on gold against the Knight Civ because it's very exposed. The Knight can come from any direction. So I make a village immediately. So if I get harassed on gold, I can just hop in. And that's exactly what happened. So he, there's a Knight, whoop, I get inside, and now I have time for my Spearman to arrive and defend there. So that's another thing that you can do. It's gonna help you against Knight Civs. And now from this point on, I will continue to produce Spearmen for the next probably 10-15 minutes. Oh yeah, Villa, oh yeah, sorry. So now I'm going to be fully producing Spearmen at all times. And now again, just like earlier, we're going back to... I'm slowly adding Archer Ranges and I'm slowly uh, producing Zuginu as well. Now I will go, I think, up to 12 on wood in this game. Uh, the reason I go up to 12 on wood this early is because I want to wall off. So, at any point, if you play against a Knight Civ, if I were to move out, he can just move in with 10 Knights and mow down my villagers. And that's something you don't want to have happen because your army is very mobile. So when you leave your base, you want to make sure there's no counterattacks happening. So what I'm going to do now is slowly start securing my base. Now, I actually got uh, my income cut here in half because I don't know if you know this, but... If there are enemy units within 8 tiles of the landmark, you get 10% less resources per minute from Meditation Gardens. So right now he has 6 units here, so I'm getting 60% less resources from Meditation Gardens. Boom. So what am I gonna do now? More Archer Ranges. Um, again, I have... Uh, in a, I think in a second I'm gonna move 12 to wood you need to be a bit more food heavy by the way with uh spearman variation so i have 11 right now that's because you're making spearmen that cost quite a lot of food so that's one thing to note and now we're gonna start walling i have three spearmen also protecting just in case a knight comes i'm walling off the bottom side as well i'm keeping my army here trying to protect my villagers on this side walling off here just slowly securing my base, just slowly kind of getting my opponent exactly where I want him. I can see JD here, I try to do a little attack. Now Meditation Gardens is safe, so now I'm getting uh, resources are climbing up. Walling off here, walling off there. And in a moment, I'm ready to go, right? 
So my opponent went for... Um, he did go for very, very fast aggression. Immediate archer range. He aged up with four. Didn't get any damage done. And now he's trying to transition to the second town center, which is um, a bit too late. So we're going to wall here. And right now we are going to get upgrades. And I am in full production mode again, like in the earlier game. So we're just going to go for it. So I'm waiting for this to finish. Again, I want to play it safe. Now everything is walled, and there's no potential of knights doing a run by. And now we go for it. So where can you attack? You can attack the gold because he wants to make knights. You can attack the you know the deer. You can attack the boar. You can attack a lot of different uh, things. And again, this is already 19 villagers running around idle time, which is quite a lot. I didn't know where that he even had a second TC, by the way. I just saw right here that he has a uh, mine stone. Then I find the town center, and I'm like, okay, let's just go destroy that. So I rotate around. My reinforcements are in base. They are going to join there, too. And if you look at the army count, that is pretty massive already. Um... Uh, so here I push in, he has some gold villagers, he tries to engage this side of my army before my main army arrives. I run away a little bit, I snipe JD. She goes down, no experience. I can just kite these knights and if you look at my army, this is his whole army by the way. It's not a lot, it's not a lot. And uh, he's running everywhere, he's getting idle time again. And now I'm just gonna make rams and uh, end the game. And then he taps out because he knows he is very very dead so that is how you play against an opponent that opens pretty aggressively with knights so you still want to do the you know the one tc all in you still want to do the push you're just gonna delay your stuff a bit and play a bit defensive early on now this is the last replay i'm gonna show you and i'm gonna i'm not gonna show you the whole replay because the game goes on for 26 minutes um i just want to show you how to play against castle rushing sieves the small adjustments that I'll make in order to be able to punish the opponent. So we start the same, nothing changes there. We're getting the gold. All good in the hood. Now initially I was going to put Meditation Gardens here. And I probably should have still. I think this was the best spot. Double stone. Very close to the woodland and berries. But I decided to go for this one. I was like, eh, budget. And then I regretted it. And I was like, oh, I should have put it down there. But, you know, it is what it is. I aged up with uh, two because I, my villager was running around. So my meditation gardens was a bit late. And uh, right now, again, collecting wood. Uh, chopping wood. Getting the uh, second Imperial official in a moment as well. There it is. Supervising that. I'm aging, I'm uh, building Archer Range with two here. Because I spotted that he is on the deer uh, very early on. And because he was on deer, I just wanted to make one zoom unit to like, you know, push him away so he doesn't uh, get it for free. So I even supervise the Archer Range. To get one out and then I go back to the Lumber Camp. So now this zoom unit is going to go push him away meanwhile he made a tower he's gonna upgrade the tower as well so and he's just gonna rush castle right after so uh, what is my plan here um, this is where I saw that he only mined a bit of stone right so I knew that this is a castle rush already and I was like okay I need to make a ram immediately so I drop a uh, blacksmith the moment I have wood for it. I see a lot of villagers on gold. I'm like, okay, he is doing that. And the first upgrade I get and I supervise it is this time siege engineering because plus one range attack or plus one uh, ranged armor is not going to help me at all. I need to get this tower down before I can do anything. So I get that immediately. I'm only on two archer ranges and I'm going to start the ram as well. He is now aging up. And because he's playing a castle rush, so it doesn't matter if this was HRE, OTD, or Ayubid, or some whatever other sib, you want to break the tower and break the gold so that they don't have the gold advantage and they're not, 
you know, they're not getting like knights and gold units, whether they're men at arms or gulams. So now we're gonna get the other upgrades. You can see the split that I have in this game, very similar to the other ones. Again, small adjustments. I put Zugino inside, so if the villagers try to torch it, I can just pop out Zugino and kill the villagers. He is now in castle, and he recognizes that he cannot um, he cannot make knights now. Now this is the best part about um, Zugino and about Jushin's legacy. Even if he was making uh, men at arms, doesn't matter if he's OTD or HRE. Even if he made men at arms, Zuginu don't do one damage to uh, men at arms. They do three damage with each shot because they shoot for five damage times three. So each shot, even if it gets reduced damage to one, they will hit for three damage. So if you have 20 or 30 Zuginu, you can still two shot men at arms and he will not have the gold to continue the production. So you will win that battle, especially if you kite a little bit. So he decides to go for scale armor, which is increases the uh, ranged armor of the gilded archers by plus three. And the reason he's doing that, he will bring his archers to men at arm level of armor, but he can produce gilded archers for just wood and food. <clears throat> so now we got the ram destroy the tower. We're going to destroy these houses and I'm going to start ramming another building right here. So if he does emergency repairs, I can just attack something else. So now this landmark has a ch chance to die. Every time he pulls the villagers, I'm there with the Zuginu. And now there's two options you can go for here. So option number one is double down. And that would have probably, not probably, that would have worked here. If I just put 20 villagers on wood and I just spammed rams and I just went for it like full on, I would have probably killed him. Um, but this game I didn't decide to do that, instead what I decided to do is age up and get my upgrades. So, again, my age up is cheaper, so I can do that pretty easily, because I felt I did enough damage, so I didn't want to risk all in it. Because I never played against this, so I wasn't sure how many gilded archers he has. Now looking back, I should have just YOLO all in, because he did not have enough units to hold this. And I'm going to show you something, his archers have 5 ranged armor now. And look at this when we fight now. Even though they have five ranged armor, which is like men at arm in castle. Look at how much damage they're taking. And that's because they sh Zuginu shoot three things at the same time. So again, if I had like 20 more Zuginu here and three more rams, he would have been giga dead. But I aged up instead. And because I'm playing against OTD, I went for the Shaolin Monastery and I vacuumed all the relics. And that's it! That is how you play the uh, probably the easiest to do and execute build right now on the ladder. It is very, very strong and most people will struggle against it. Now, because I made a guide for this, I might make a counter guide to Jushi's Legacy by playing, let's say, five, six, seven games against another top uh, Conqueror player with different civilizations and show you guys how to counter this. So if you're interested in that, let me know. But that's it. That is how you play uh, Jushi's Legacy in uh, Season 6 and soon 7 as well. At least one of the builds. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you try out Jushi's Legacy. And um, check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. Twitch gamers, keep going.